this one, Bobby. We got a lot of noise here. <laughs> Yeah, this is an F7U3. An F7U3. What year would that have been available? Yep, 1953, 52, 51. And it's a, got two engines made by GE. Uh -huh. And uh, it's the prettiest aircraft in the sky. Now, did yeah. you work on one of these when you worked here? I, and I started in 1953. I worked on the mezzanine up there under Bob Downing. And I worked in the cockpit area of this aircraft. Wow. So this is what you started working on right here. Did you hear that? Yeah, First. that's the Cutlass. Yeah. Okay, what is this? That'll, you'll see that. That's on the other side yeah. of the plane. That's, that's this it. plane. Cutlass. F7U3. Uh, F7U3. I'm sorry, Bobby, we got a lot of noise going on. Okay, so what, what did you used to do over here uh, to retire from this place? Well, for the last 20 years, I was supervision. You were a supervisor, so you were Bobby's supervisor. He was my supervisor. All right, all right. So what are you working on now? What? Oh, okay, so you're putting the sheet metal on the wing. Now, is that aluminum or is that cloth? Aluminum, aluminum. So you're skinning the wing, and then is that going to be pop riveted on when you're done? Yeah, we'll be screwed on. Screws. I'll put them on the screw. Now, do you use some kind of special screw that doesn't vibrate loose, or what's going on? Well, the, the nut plates I put on there are anti anti lock nut plates, so it won't vibrate loose. Okay. Plus, it'll be sealed. It'll be sealed. The whole all the panels be sealed on. Wow. So well, thanks a lot. Why well, we got a lot of noise in this area? We see one of your co-workers over there doing some hardcore body work. We're going to let you get back to it, bud. All right. All right. What we got over here, Bobby, what are those? Those are rivets. Those are aircraft rivets. Oh, you bet. So they're self-sealing. They don't, they're not regular rivets where they got holes in them. Well, on this model, they didn't seal each rivet in the individually. Is that a special rivet gun you used on something like oh, that? Oh yeah. yeah, it all goes on that, wow. that, that, buck, buck, buck. You gotta have uh, two people. Now he said that he's gonna use screws on this wing over here. Well, that's the way you put the skin on. Oh, okay. You build the skin and then you screw it on so that they can get So access. is that a temporary situation screwing it on? No, no. That's, that's so they'll leave the screws on it. Well, if you had a damage underneath the wing, you got to pull that skin oh, off. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Now, this is riveted right here. Oh, yeah. This is the engine that sails there. And Can you imagine does. being a, a rivet girl back in the uh, 1930s? Many. Most of all of that, Vault developed a vault Matic, yeah, which is an automatic rivet. Oh, okay. Most of these are shot by hand. That's what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Didn't they have, like, girls in the war that Try would... Try to be the riveter. Be a riveter? Right. 
17,000 employees yeah. worked here in 1953. Wow. 17,000. Wow. Now, who's this yeah. guy over here doing the body work? Body. That's Earl. That's, that's body man Earl? Yeah, that's, that's the paint shop. Okay. He retired from the paint shop. Uh huh. You took us in the paint shop. That place was humongous. Yeah. I got right. footage of that. We're going to show that in this video. standing in is probably the biggest paint booth you'll ever see in your life. This is an airplane hanger paint booth. If you look behind me on the wall behind me, those are the exhaust filters on the wall that actually suck the air out and uh, keep all the paint fumes inside so it doesn't get contaminated. As I turn around, you can see that this is the intake side of the wall right here and you can see that it goes on as long as the whole building. So this is uh, the giant paint booth where they actually paint airplanes and uh, it's a humongous situation is what it is. If you look on the floor over there you can see the overspray that has been uh, de de participated down to the ground. It's the green dust. Uh, it looks like they were painting something green. Possibly putting the primer on these wings right here. This is one of the wings that they are restoring and this is the primer that they're using. I don't know what kind of primer it is but it's some type of primer made specifically for airplane usage itself. All right, how you doing, Earl? Ah, I'm doing great. Now, we're inside, of, we're basically inside a giant paint booth, am I right? You're right. Now, is this wall here, that would be your, that would be the intake here that just comes out and then it exhausts out the other side? That is correct. That wow. Is correct. Because I got a paint body shop <laughs> and I have a paint booth, but it ain't nothing like this. Not quite this big. Not this big. <laughs> Now what are they using right here? What kind of primer are you using on this? Water, water, water based primer. This is water based primer right. so it doesn't hurt the uh, environment in any way no, whatsoever. No, but they still vacuum it out. They still vacuum, it sucks out the fumes, right. right? Now will they paint a complete airplane in here or is this just for parts only in here, Earl? This is for parts only. This is a parts only. Now, if they were going to paint a whole airplane, do they actually have a bigger paint booth than this? Uh, full of my paint is done in the Marshall Street. Do what? The complete air, the complete airplane is painting the Marshall Street. Now they do have the capabilities of painting airplanes in here. Now when you say you're a prepper guy, what do you do exactly? Do you sand the metal down and get a prayer to prep? I uh, get, get rid of the old, uh, the the old finish. Corroded, corroded paint, clean it up, well, scrub it down. Because I'm looking at your hands, dude. Those are some working man hands there, <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Good luck with your primer. Are you the primer guy or are you the one that sprays them? No, I don't, I don't, I don't do any primer. You're just a whatsoever. sanding guy. You're um, a sander and a prepper. Prepper, right. Now, is that what you used to do here over at Vault when you worked here? Oh, no. Uh, I was a manufacturing engineer. Manufacturing engineer. Supervision over... Uh, Supervisor. Machine, over machine shop and then with manufacturing Now, what do you engineer. think about closing this program down and getting rid of you guys? I'll take the ball. <laughs> you don't like it? I don't like it. Well, I, I hope they keep it open, bud. Too much of history here. There you go. That's right. There you go, the okay. history. Thank you. All right. All right. When it has the Global Hawk wing in here. The Global put, Hawk wing? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's 150 foot long, and they they send it down and they prime it. Oh, my they gosh. They got 1,000 tolerance on the wave of the of the skin. Gosh, dude. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see, actually. Are you a painter guy, too? What yeah. are you, bud? What's your name? Shake your hand, make my, a friend. My name is Andy. Andy? Marcus. Andy Marcus. Now, how long have you worked here, Andy? Oh, but uh, I worked 35 years. 25 years? 35. 35? Yeah. Now, what was your job here? Yeah, everything. Everything. You're, you're like the jack of all trades over here. You can do it all. Yeah, I, whatever they put in there, helicopters, airplanes, yeah. name it. So, are you yeah. working in the prep shop today? 
You help the sand? Well, I, I prep and paint. And oh, so you're the painter too? Yeah, yeah. Now, what kind of paint are they using to paint these besides waterborne primer? Well, they use, uh, 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 like on those parts we bring today, uh -huh. it's going to be oil those paint. Little, those little yeah, frame it's parts? Be oil paint. Oil paint? Yeah, oil paint. Really? Yeah. Now, are you going to spray that on or would you brush no, it? No, I spray it. Everything over here is a spray. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is... Well, just, touch, just touching off is, is uh, uh -huh. only for small parts. So that's an oil-based paint that you're going to be using on those now. Is there a reason for that? Yes, because it's different material and different airplane. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, this is why they put the... What do you think about closing that, uh, that, plant, that uh, retirement thing down? What do you think about that? Well... You're going to be a sad guy the day it happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Andy. Take okay. it easy. Good we got to go, bud. Okay. Appreciate it. Welcome. Keep right. up the good work. You guys are doing great. Thank you. All righty. This is the biggest paint booth you've probably ever seen in your life, loser. Yeah. It's just giant, giant. Where are we going, Bobby? Okay, come on. We need to loosen and fill it up with rocks. Now, now, back in the day, did they used to bondo them like that, or is this just for a show plane type deal? Bondo didn't come, come in. To I joined the Navy in 53, and that's when bond I first saw the first can of Bondo. So did they actually use Bondo on airplanes back then to I smooth them out? or? Man, Navy has a slight imperfection they might have. But on this particular airplane, you're doing it for show because it's going to be hanging somewhere. On this aircraft, if a panel was damaged in any way, that panel come off. It doesn't matter if it's 8 foot long, 20 foot long. It come off and replaced with a new one. Wow. The, the, air, the, the government wouldn't buy the aircraft if it had one little, one wow. little imperfection. Not two, one. Gosh, dude. So they're very picky on this. Let me get a walk around real quick, Bob. didn't go over very well, very strong. They only made about 180 of them. That's all? Or 280 of them. Wow. And when I hired in in 53, I only lasted about 100 days, and they lost the contract on ship number 200. And <clears throat> so I walked out the door, and that's when I hired in General Motors. Oh, okay. But um, it was... Underpowered a little bit. It was an underpowered aircraft. Yeah, and it it didn't do stalls very well. It go up, it fly beautiful, but it got into a stall. It couldn't get out. Huh. And so they they pulled a plug on it, but they had, they made over 280 of them. Wow, that's crazy. But it was a beautiful aircraft flying. Now, is this plane once you're done with it? Is it gonna be? Nothing flies after we get through with it. Just for look. Hey, what we do, if you notice, we cut out all the hydraulics out of the window. No wires, no, no tubes, no nothing. All they do is just paint it, put the wings on it, use it for display. Okay. So it'll go in a museum somewhere? No, this aircraft is designated to go to California, probably a San Diego on the Hornet. On the flight line. Okay, oh, on the uh, on the uh, carrier plane out there. Right. Uh, the museum carrier plane. Now, carrier they got. We had this wings, as you saw, built, completely finished, and they came in from California and said, it's got metal light in it, which is a piece of aluminum covered up a piece of cardboard and then another piece of aluminum. It's sort of like a sandwich. Yeah. And it's, it's light, and that's what they used for skin. But they didn't want that because they thought that cardboard would deteriorate. Block. Yeah, so they want us to take all that off oh, and man. put solid skin. Jesus. On. Yeah, that's that the reason sucks. my water is working on that. Now, is this uh, is this back here? Is this a uh, is this, this is, part of this plane? Yeah, this is the top 
Yeah. This, this is the, the tail left, section. This is the left hand uh, rudder. And huh. then on the other side is the bottom part with the That's wheel. Right. Wow. Yeah. It's like the other side. This is where we experiment on on material. Put, putting the epoxy on it. Uh huh. Or what they call uh, dope and. They, they, we trained on this to learn how to do it. Oh, okay. And this man here, he died about halfway in the program. So So this is literally from the 50s when you worked here? Well, no, this is about uh, three years ago when we started. Oh, okay, okay. In order, we had the pancake come out of the Smithsonian and we had to reskin it. I remember that. playing for a very long time. I remember seeing this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is a 1917 radio engine. That's a 1917 engine? Yes. Radio. That's what was going on that area. It's called a radial engine. Yeah. Let's talk to the professional over here and see what he says about it. It's a Pratt Whitney 1340. It's a what? Pratt Whitney 1340 uh -huh. nine-cylinder radial engine. cylinder radio is now where was this engine built uh, well, uh, in America, uh, America uh, oh yeah England yeah, American okay now have you guys completely rebuilt this motor is it run and drive uh, this is uh, strictly gonna be a static airplane so okay so this is a dummy airplane for uh, looks only right. museum en engine yes but that's the original authentic engine that we're looking at that was actually in the air in 1917 Bobby one that is similar to the one. Okay, so this isn't an exact engine, but it was similar to the ones in 1917. Right. We took it apart and took the pistons out and left them out because it'll never crank. And I have put it together. You helped put this together, Bobby? I did. I, I did help put it together. Uh huh. And I can very proud it was. It's it's a hard engine to put together. These are push rods, aren't they? For your rock, your lifters yeah. and rockers are up in here. That's right. That's right. Now these louvers here are for heating the engine up. So because when you're up in the air, the temperature's like 20 below zero. Well, you, you, just when you're starting up, you know, you got to get all this oil warm right. up and everything when you first crank it up. Yeah. Well, the control it's controlled by the pilot. Oh, this is controlled by the pilot. Yeah. Huh? Did you hear that, Manny? Uh -huh. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. They have control for everything. What were these for? Uh, this is for the brackets for this uh, He's putting ring. Uh, a cover. Around cowling. Cowling. Oh, okay. Cowling for it. And he's built it by the hand. And he's doing a real big, good job. They, they, uh, they call that a pound. Let's look at that and see what kind of job he did. 
Now you built this by hand, right, right. from scratch. Right. Is that fiberglass or aluminum? So what, how did you make that to be precise that it is? Well, I made a pattern first, and then, and then I, out of plaster. Okay, so you made a model out of plaster, and then you covered it with then I, fiberglass. Then I, made, and then I pulled this off of that. that. Now, back in the day, would they have made this out of fiberglass, or would they have made that out of aluminum or something? They didn't know what fiberglass was back then. Right, so what did they make this out of back in 1970? Uh, I would suppose they would spin aluminum on a big lathe. Wow. I don't spin would it cost a fortune to do that now? Huh. If you can find somebody to And do this it. is basically the cover for the engine when it's mounted on the airplane. We went over to buy a used cow from a, a salvage deal over in Dallas. And he wanted what? Eight hundred thousand dollars. Six thousand. Six thousand dollars for one of those? Not for one of these. One we'd have to cut up. We'd have to, to cut it, it and modify it to make it work. Yeah. God. Wow. How many hours you got in this thing? Yeah, I don't. Even, I wouldn't have one. I'm praying, but probably hour to do that. Wow. Well, you guys got a hell of a plant going on here. Uh, I remember back when I came out here a couple years ago, you guys were up in a big giant factory over there. Right. And y'all were doing a lot of stuff. It was nice meeting you, buddy. Yeah. You can leave that glove on. Okay. You need to get back to work, bro. Yeah. They're counting on you to get her done. All right. Well, thank All right. You. soldier and he went to all of the uh, engagements what they had in, after Normandy. Wow. And he's decorated by the French. Uh, so we go get an interview with him? Yeah. Will yeah, he talk he, to he us? He loved that. Will he? Yeah. He Alright so he's like a decorated war hero That's right. of World War II. Let's That's go right. talk to this guy and see what's going on. Now hold on Bobby. What is this guy doing here for us? What is he doing? He's our cockpit person. He makes the little instruments and all the little uh, levers. And okay, all let's that. go talk to him. What's his name? Bob. Bob? He's not a Bob. Uh, okay. Can't think of his last name at the moment. Okay, let's talk to Bob. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? You doing all right, Bob? Yeah, see there, he's a World War II veteran. Hi, hi, his how name you is doing? Robert Easter. Wow. That's crazy. So, how you doing today? Pretty good, how you doing? Pretty good. Bobby with Talents. Bobby was telling us you're, this, you're a big war hero from World War II. Yeah. Tell you got all kinds of medals and honors and decorated, decorated from here to there and everywhere in between. That's right. Give me a picture of it when you get it. Do give what? Me, give me a picture of what you take. Okay. You want me to get a picture of you? Get over there with me, man. Get you a picture. We'll get oh, you a picture. Oh, boy. Now you're, now okay. you're smoking. There you go. Hang on. Get down there with me. This is okay. Mindy. Okay, got a good picture. Okay, Bob, so what are y'all working on in here, guys? Well, we're working on the car. Now, who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm Huey. Your name's Huey. Huey. Huey, yeah. And uh, uh, Bob and I have been working on this project, on this... Uh, for for how many years? Uh, Bob, 10 years. This is a 10-year project, Bob? Yeah. Wow. So you went over to France, you were in Normandy, uh, Battle of Bulge, you met Patton. What on big A? George S. Patton was my general. He was? Yeah. He, you were in his brigade and he was your general, George S. Patton. I want to show you what they oh made. Oh my God. This is... <laughs> so Bob and Huey made this? Yeah, they made it. Well, not, not so good. They made it. What's that made out of, Bobby? Well, it's off of light. I don't know. It's <laughs> it looks of like fiberglass. No, it's all aluminum. It's oh, it's made out of metal it's aluminum. Just, it's a prop to put in there. So it's a replica of the real thing, huh, Huey? Uh, yeah, it is. And, uh, uh, however, it's... Uh, you know, you see those movies and they're standing behind them and they're going... Yeah, that's right. it's, it's Give me your phone. I'm going to send these to Bobby and then he can... Yeah, I'm going okay. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. You have to give everybody's email number. Yeah. No. Now, like I said, we did not make, build that replica. Okay, you did not build it. We, we updated it. In other words, we Oh, were, okay, so it was already a replica made, and then you upgraded it upgraded to match it to, to the situation. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, they made a site for it. This goes in that biplane over there. Oh, is this like the 1917 job? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, did you ever see Hitler? Did you ever see Adolf Hitler or any of his tycoons? Yeah. You never saw him, you just fought him. 
Oh, that's deep. Yeah, I was in the army, I did. I hear that. All right. A bullet hit his gun and he couldn't use it no more. Oh, my God. So he had to get another gun. <laughs> Robert, it was nice meeting you, buddy. Thank you very much. Hey, let's see the little pictures you can maybe some. I'm gonna, we're going to give them to Bobby so you can get all those pictures. You ought to see some of them. We're going to get, we're gonna get a bunch so of pictures. You see the airplane, the instrument panels in there. How old are you now? 90? The instrument panel? Yeah. You that, guys made that instrument. In that bow wing? Yeah. You guys made that. Yeah. I, I took a big picture of it. I got okay. it. That's awesome. We made that too. I know you did. That's awesome, Robert. Yeah. So what are you all doing right here now? What's going on besides donuts and... Uh, They're making... Yeah. Look, right yeah. now we're making we're making uh, fixtures to hold a gun sight and a um, telescope. Telescope and yeah, gun sight. Yeah. Well, it looks like you guys are busy. I'm going to let you all go. Thank you very much, Robert. It was Good great to meet you, sir. You. Okay, Huey, you. thank you. It was nice meeting you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Sure we got some pictures. I'd like to see him put them in my menu. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'm absolutely. making a video. It's going to be a video. I'll make a copy on a DVD and give you guys one. Okay. Okay? okay. All right. We'll see you all later, guys. It was nice meeting you, too. Nice see you all later. Okay. Keep up the good work. Take care. All right. Heil Hitler. No? No? Okay. Take it easy, guys. This is Jim Hill, our president of our retirees. Uh, Retiree club. No, restoration. There you go, restoration club. How you doing, Jim? Doing good. So what are y'all doing in there? What's going on back in the, the hidden 40? Well, <laughs> in there is a storeroom, and we got a little half shell that we take out to uh, shows. Uh-huh, that right. actually flies. It did fly. Now, when you say half scale, you're talking this thing is half scale of the original yeah, authentic plane. You there. got it. It's a kit. Huh. Right, there. there we go. Void Heritage Foundation, Jim Hill President. Chairman and President. So you're the ones keeping all this going. I'm a flunky. That's what that says. You're the one keeping all this going. <laughs> I'm like her. I could have it. Let's go in there and look at that airplane, Jim. Okay. You go ahead. All right. Okay. It's nice meeting you, buddy. Nice to meet you, buddy. We're looking around. Everything's... Thank you. What are you making, buddy? Oh, we're making parts for the... Uh, engine cow. The O3 U3. Okay, the 03 U3. That's like a top priority project going on over here. <laughs> 1933 design back there. I thought that was 1917. No, no, no. That was the first one. Oh, that's the first one. So you're doing the 33 he, version. He sold that one to the Army. Okay, okay. This one's almost complete. That one's pretty nice there. This, when we're going to put this on together, we'll just sort of static put it together. And they'll assemble it in California. Oh, okay, so you're just going to pre-test fit everything, and then when they when they get it out in California, then they they have professional retired guys out there that are yeah. going to put it together. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll paint it here. Now, where is this plane going? You said it was going on the USS Hornet. The Hornet. Hornet. Now that's the one that's uh, based out there. It's uh, in the San Diego Bay. It's the yeah. museum, right? It's the yeah. uh, carrier ship. Yeah, it'll be on the carrier. Okay. On it. Huh. And, and, uh, well, it's pretty amazing, Bobby, that you guys are out here working. Now, what do we got going on here? Is this part of this? Yeah, this is the left side. Oh, that's the left side, and on the other side was the right. Got it, bud. So, is this ready to go out there, or are you going to paint that still? Oh, yeah, we'll be painting. It'll be blue. It's going to be blue, just like the United States Navy. Yeah, that's right. Wow. They took the concept on this aircraft, and they took our engineers from this aircraft to GD, and they put the F-16 together. Okay, so this is a void airplane, 100%. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They... And this is the one that didn't last that long. Oh, yeah, you're right. And, okay, I see what you're saying. And now, the F-16, we were supposed to get the contract on the Navy version. We were supposed to get the contract on the Navy version uh -huh. of the F-16. What happened? Well, we never got it because the F-16 was uh, Air Force and they just never got around. Oh, so you basically built, Boyd built airplanes for the Navy. That's right. That was a Navy contract, not an Air Force or Army. That's right. That's okay, right. now we're getting down to it. See, yeah. I see what you're saying. So why didn't the government just use 
Why didn't you build them for other services? Why were you on just for the Navy only? I don't know why. Uh, Vault started with the Navy uh -huh. in 17 or 18, and they stayed right with it. Let's go talk to the body man over there while he's not sanding that much. Yeah. What are you working on, Earl? What's going on? Well, getting all the blemishes off the body of this two-fledged airplane. This, this. <laughs> all yep. the little dings and dancing. Uh huh. Crack. <laughs> it's lunch time in there, Earl. Everybody's on lunch break except you. That's right. I don't get a lunch break. Oh my gosh, bud. <laughs> well, you keep up the good work, Earl. You're doing a good job using that DA sander. What are you using there? 80 grit? Uh, what, what 80? You need to use 80 or go faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah use that 80 grit on that, it'll tear it down. It'll leave that rough finish, though. Yeah, but then you go back with 180 to finish it out. I'm going to do it one time. I'm gonna there you go, buddy. Take it easy, Earl. Right. We'll see you later, bud. God, these guys are like hardcore workers over here. They make young folks look look stupid. Earl does a beautiful job. He, he does a beautiful job. He, he broke his arm about a, six months ago. Had to come out here with a deal. And oh was my gosh! In this place. Yeah, dude. <laughs> He's Standing dedicated. One arm. Standing He's dedicated. one arm. Yeah. All right, so there you go. That's uh, what you're calling volunteer only. These guys are all retired. Everybody's retired. That's working here. This is a retired operation. They work on donations only. They don't work on uh, anything of getting any type of money at all. And everything that you're seeing here is two days a week only. Amazing. Really, really amazing. Now, taking granted that the original airplane that this was made of was made out of wood. And, well, if you didn't understand what's going on now, go back in the video and let the professionals explain it. Because I'm far from being a professional airplane builder. And I don't want to step on anybody's foot by saying that I am. A lot of clamps here. Look at this. This is just immaculate, meticulous, uh, precise work going on. So, wow. You got to give these guys a big hand. And, uh, you know, they're getting her done and they're doing it right. And it's a little lesson in life that says, you know what? Get out there. Get off your lazy ass. And do it. And that's basically what it is. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, Bobby. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Peter. We're going to mix all that other footage. Remember that guy that was out here? Loudmouth. <laughs> yeah, can't use it. Loser Weekly. Yeah. Okay, bud. You want to yeah. go eat a burger with us, Bobby? Yeah, bud. Well. Come on, bud. Let's go. Okay, burger time over at Theo's. My friend Pete's got to go. We're going to go feed Bobby. He's going to get a burger. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this little video set because it looks like it's going to be more than one, or there was. And uh, y'all take care, and we'll see you again. Take it easy. Did you have fun? Are you glad yeah, you came over here? Yeah, I am, I am. That was cool. Uh, we'll take my truck, bud. Come on. Okay. That was awesome. Let Bobby sit in the front. Oh, yeah. Okay.